Frankie, I know we haven't talked in a while. Well, yeah, that's because I rarely talk to people that aren't in my family. But I think we probably should, because I got a different iPhone. I'm no longer rocking the SE. Okay, great. You got a different phone. What is it, an Android now? No, no, but it's much bigger than the SE. <laughs> okay, that could mean it's an 8 Plus. Why do I care? No, it still runs iOS 17, and there's no more home button. Great, okay, you got a modern iPhone. Why should I care? And it's got Face ID, of course, just like you, and it's 6.1 inches. Okay, and is it uh, space gray? No, of course not. Space gray is for peasants. This one is just black. Is my broke baby brother telling me that he upgraded to a 14 Pro? Well, uh, no, but it has lightning. All iPhones have lightning. Shut up, just tell me what it is. Yo boy got an iPhone 11. Oh, screw you. Uh -huh. Let's begin. I know, I'm a liar. I'm a big fat liar. I apologize. I was very, very happy and content with my iPhone SE 2. And genuinely, as much as you guys aren't going to believe me, I totally expected to keep that and continue using it basically until it stopped working. And it was still working. Yes, the battery would shut off at 10% a lot of the time. The battery health was at 78%. I was running out of storage on it pretty frequently. It was not in good condition, but I wanted to send the message that everybody should try to get by with less and that it didn't really matter which iPhone you had. So all of the videos I've posted on this channel from the past like six weeks while I was out of the country were basically all filmed on an iPhone SE 2, which you can find for like a hundred bucks. And I thought that was a good message to send out there to people who are living on a budget. But there's one thing that comes before work for me and that's family. Family matters. And I guess we were playing a little bit of uh, musical chairs in the household as of late because everybody started switching phones. Of course, on our trip through the Philippines and Thailand and Hawaii, we were taking lots of pictures and taking lots of videos, particularly my wife, who is actually using this phone. She had been on the iPhone 11 for a while. It's a long story how she ended up on that, and I'm trying to keep this video somewhat concise, but essentially her frustration with this phone was nothing to do with the camera or the display or any of that battery life was still honestly great for her it was the storage there was only 64 gigs on here and she was hoping to have a better solution than just oh everybody just needs to sign up for iCloud and if you guys can recall not too long ago I was rocking an iPhone 10 back when we thought that thing was gonna get iOS 17 like it deserved to I was the same iPhone 10 that I bought way back in 2017 and younger dumber drew ended up opting for the 256 gig iPhone 10 and what happened to that iPhone 10 some of you may have asked. Well, my younger sister was rocking an iPhone 6, which was not running the latest apps, and she was kind of hoping for an iPhone that could run the latest version because, of course, she likes her video apps and her games and stuff that she plays on her phone. So when I made the switch to the iPhone SE 2, I said, hey, your iPhone's really old. You can just have my iPhone 10, you know, free of charge, and that worked for her. You know, it was obviously a substantial upgrade from the iPhone 6, but we noticed that we may have not been taking advantage of our current current hardware as well because that phone had a ton of storage and my younger sister is not as big a video taker or a photo taker so she had 256 gigs of storage and was only using about 25 30 gigs on her phone and my wife was constantly filling up her phone with just 64 gigs so she asked her sister okay how would you feel about switching to you know the iPhone SE 2 which was the phone I was using because it's more close in size to the iPhone 6 she was using before she has smaller hands Hand, so she didn't really want to go with too much of a bigger phone. She was comfortable with having a home button and everything. She just wanted to have the latest app support. And also I felt kind of bad that like, hey, you want a new phone so that you get the latest supported version of apps. And I gave her the iPhone 10, which doesn't get iOS 17. So she kind of immediately is going to start facing the ramifications of not having an iPhone that's capable of running iOS 17. And of course, she's comfortable with a smaller size phone and everything, doesn't really care too much about the camera. So we decided, okay, the younger sister can have the SE2. That way she gets iOS 17 and probably iOS 18. My wife has now switched to the iPhone 10, which has 256 gigs of storage, which she's very happy about. And yes, I warned her. I said, honey, you're not going to get iOS 17. You're not going to get nightstand support. You're not going to get subject lift. And she was like, Drew, I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want a phone that has a ton of storage. Honestly, my wife would probably switch to like a 256 gig iPhone 8 
if we had it available or even an iPhone 7 if that existed but it doesn't and of course we're all in favor of just making the best use we have with the hardware that's available so rather than go out and buy new solutions which is the tech community thing to do we like to look for excuses to go out and buy new tech we just decided okay the younger sister can have the SE2 my wife can have the iPhone 10 which leaves me with the iPhone 11 so I got clearance from the wife on this one I am allowed to throw her under the bus in this video and say while I was comfortable and content with keeping the SE2 and you know I was perfectly content with everybody just sticking with their phones and I was like honey you can just kind of airdrop pictures and videos onto my Mac if you run out of storage she didn't want to fuss with that she said Drew you can blame me in the video that's totally fine so here I am I love you honey but this was a lot of freaking work to get everybody's phone switched over and now without really my choice but for the betterment of the family I'm rocking an iPhone 11 and I do plan on doing a longer term perspective on it like using it in 2023 in a couple months once I've had it for a while but my first impressions it's been like less than 48 hours since I've made the switch I got to admit uh I don't really like this phone I mean there's definitely upgrades compared to the SE2 like yes I got an ultra wide camera I got night mode and the main sensor is definitely way better than the SE2 and as I've used my iPhone much more as a tool as of late yes I am grateful for the upgrades like of course the display is much bigger much more screen real estate to work with and iOS feels way more optimized for the gesture control compared to the home button definitely like as a media consumption device this is a massive improvement but I don't know if you guys have recalled from the past I am just genuinely not a huge fan of the 6.1 inch form factor for the exact reason that I've started experiencing in the last couple days it doesn't feel super compact and maybe I've been spoiled after using the iPhone 10 for a few months and then the SE2 for a few months I really started to appreciate and enjoy smaller sized phones it's easier to hold them they fit in my pocket nicer and I can put them on the wireless charger in my car and the car display doesn't cover up the screen but this phone of course is much bigger in everything but it still doesn't feel like so big that it's like a phablet to me that's what like the 11 Pro Max and of course the 14 Pro Max all that stuff like the screen is so big like yes it takes up more space in your pocket and it's harder to hold but you just feel like the screen is so massive that you basically have this giant tablet that actually has a calculator app that you're taking along with you so I know it's a weird perspective but I'm kind of a saturated guy I like going all in on things and I felt like you know with iPhones at least what I preferred was the biggest possible screen or the smallest possible screen that's why in the past I've defended and debated like I couldn't decide between should I go with the 12 mini or the 12 pro max or should i go with an sc2 or should i go with a 15 ultra you know it's kind of like all in or all out for me and it's hard to make up my mind on things and this just kind of feels like the worst of both like the screen doesn't feel massive part of that might be because of the pixel density or something but a lot of the time the icons and things feel a little bit crammed but it also doesn't feel super compact and small and like way way easier to fit in my pocket compared to the sc2 i was also never a fan of this camera bump design like ultimately yes it doesn't really matter in your day-to-day -day usage but I was much more of a fan of the smaller combined camera bump on the iPhone 10 and I was even more so a fan of the ultra minimal camera bump on the iPhone SE 2 it was just such a clean iPhone back design and while I do appreciate that they centered the Apple logo and got rid of the iPhone text I'm a minimalist so I appreciate that design choice but this camera bump is just way bigger and bulkier than I think it needs to be we know Apple can do a dual camera system that is not all squared off like this but probably manufacturing efficiency is why this helps and the other thing that really bugs me about this chassis which again is not like a deal breaker or anything but the lightning port is not symmetrically in the middle it's still slightly down I think because it's a liquid retina display and because it's an LCD like they can't bend it as much as they do with OLED so the attachment of the display pushes that lightning port down a little bit more like as far as just design language goes this is definitely not my first choice I didn't even want to switch to this iPhone it was just kind of the iPhone that fell to me because no one else really wanted it or could utilize it so I guess because it's the best camera in the house I should be grateful that I have a decent camera but it's still 64 gigs it still has 87 percent battery health and on top of that you know this is not a phone we got new we got it from a friend and it has a screen protector applied which if you know me I'm more of a caseless guy and I like just having the iPhone in its naked form in the screen protector I noticed 
notice it every time I swipe up to go home. I'm debating if I should just take it off, but that kind of feels stupid because I should probably take better care of my tech. And every time I make one of these videos, I genuinely mean it. I plan to stick with this phone for the long haul, but I probably shouldn't make those promises to you guys anymore because I feel like every couple of months something comes up in life and for the sake of the family and for the sake of best utilizing the hardware around us, I end up having to switch to something. So I'm not going to commit to anything anymore. Right now, for the foreseeable future, I plan on just continuing to use this iPhone. Yes, in terms of like having a display, it's much nicer than the SE2 and honestly, it's been kind of nice as I've been spending a lot of time on Twitter or X lately. Like there's certainly upgrades about it that I will utilize that hopefully will benefit the channel, but it's still 64 gigs. So I'm still going to be deleting a bunch of stuff all the time, like that. And I will admit, it's very, very nice to have Face ID back again. I absolutely prefer Face ID to Touch ID, and I prefer gesture control to clicking on the home button. There were so many iOS things, like in the Apple Card app, that were clearly not optimized for the home button. Like, every time I just wanted to click to go home or something, it would try to activate Apple Pay, because it's like, oh, it's fingerprints on the button! You know, iOS just didn't feel quite right on the SE2, and it definitely feels better here. So, it's not gonna help me with my smartphone addiction, because this phone is definitely a lot easier to use and the battery life is substantially better than the SE2, but I will take advantage of the camera upgrades and I still get wireless charging, which is nice, but hey, I still don't have 5G and technically this iPhone is older than the SE2, even though it has the same chip, but at the same time, it feels kind of nice to say, hey, I'm getting by with an iPhone that's about to turn four years old this year. It's still a very capable phone. It's still very good. It just wasn't really my first choice. I'm trying to just kind of adapt and adjust with whatever the family needs me to use. So as of right now, I'm rocking the iPhone 11. What will I be rocking in a couple months? Who knows? But I'm still very much in favor of trying to show people how you can get by with older tech and you don't need the latest and greatest because it's honestly not that different and it's way more expensive. So I'll keep you guys posted with iPhone 11 content, I guess, in the not too distant future. And if there's anything about it you want perspective or opinions on, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you all in the next one.